We are live. Welcome to the Jackson Rudolph podcast. I am your host, Jackson Rudolph, and this is episode 81 with newly crowned Waco world champion Enrique Latona. Enrique, it is an honor to have you on the show tonight, especially coming off of such a big win. Waco is known for great point fighting talent, and you just went over to Italy and won the Waco world championship. Uh, you've been successful in the NASCAR circuit as well, uh, most recently winning the open weight, the overall, basically winning everything at the American Internationals, right? Um, yeah. A member of Top 10 Team USA, uh, an incredibly impressive resume. Uh, but for our Black Belt Magazine audience who may or may not be sport karate fans and may or may not have seen you fight before, uh, let's just start. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Who is Enrique Latona? Okay, hi. I hope uh, you're okay. No, first, thank you for this opportunity, you know, that for me, always I watch your forms. You are really great. I think in the life you are the best in arms. And thank you very much for this. Okay, me, my name is Enrique Letona. I have 19 years old. Uh, I started when I have three years old, Karari. Uh, I practice Kempo, Hawaiian Kempo. And I feel good now that I am world champion, you know, is feeling really, really good. But this is about me. Um, yes, this. <laughs> awesome. And yeah, Hawaiian Kempo, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about martial arts in Guatemala throughout this show. And uh, one thing that I noticed, because I went, you were probably young when it happened, because I'm old now, old in sport karate years. Um, but I went and taught seminars in Guatemala, uh, and a lot of the martial arts, there are Kempo stylists, which I find really interesting, but we'll get into that more later. First, I want to talk about the Waco World Championship, right? Uh, first, just tell us about that championship fight. Uh, are you nervous going in there? What was the competition like? Just tell us how it feels to come out on top at the Waco World Championship. Yes, okay. First, in the first moment when I was here in Guatemala, I was training a lot for this world championship. I was coming three years ago to the world championship juniors. and I lost in the second fight. Uh, so for me, it was hard to back, you know, in world championship because I want to win this competition and was really nervous. I started to train a lot. My dad was training me uh, in the morning, in the afternoon, in the night because I want this world championship you know so when i go there uh i was feeling really nervous because they are great fighters you know it's world championship uh, they are from many competitions many uh, countries so in the, my first fight was really hard you know because me i'm from usa going to europe is something you know something different so for me the referees the coaches Everything, the fighters is difficult for me. So in the first fight, when I go inside, I say the first word that I say is, I want this. I want to win this fight, you know? So I go inside, I feel really nervous. Second, because it's three rounds, you know? In Nazca, I do one round or two rounds, okay? But here is three rounds. If you lose, you lose your world championship. You know, you don't fight anymore. And it's one week, you know? So I was feeling really nervous. I go to my first fight and it was really hard. I won by one point and I was feeling really, really happy for my first fight, you know? Because the first fight was uh, with the Russian guy. It was really hard to fight with him. But after this fight, I was feeling more good, more, I don't know, just I feel like me, you know? And after that, my second fight was with Ireland. I won by six, six five points, something like that. After that, I fight with, uh, you know, you don't know, Timmy from Germany. He's a really good fighter. So I was feeling nervous too, because they are good fighters. They are in Europe. Me and come to United States, you know? So it's feeling really, really nervous. I won the last one, it was the most harder, really the most, because I was, I was feeling really nervous because I want to win this competition, you know, they are good fighters. And I was feeling, 
really, really, I don't know. I don't know how to say. And my dad was like, you have to win. My, my other coach, you have to win. You know, my family, you have to win. My people, you have to win. So this pressure is, you know, is something. You, you can know that. You compete. Uh-huh. So you can know that. So after that, I was talking with my brother. And he started to tell me how to fight with this person, with this guy. And after that, I won. When I won, I just cry, you know, because I was training a lot for these two years. I was training for this competition. It's the most important in this uh, sport, you know. So I was feeling really happy. My dad was crying with me. Uh, was really, I feel really good, you know. I feel like I, I have to do more. Yeah, because I don't want to stay there. Just win this world championship. I want more, you know. That's but this is how I was feeling in my fights. And that's such a beautiful moment that you described to have your brother there with you, Jason. Shout out to him, another one of the world's best fighters uh, who's just coming up from the junior division to join you in the adults now, right? Uh, and then especially sharing that moment with your dad is so special. And one thing that I think is especially important for our audience to hear is that you're one of the top lightweight fighters in the world, and you were nervous, right? Like, it's normal for these top competitors to go out there and be nervous competing for these prestigious titles, whether it's a WACO world title or the U.S. Open or the Diamonds or whatever it is, right? Um, But there's still nerves that set in, and that's very human, right? Um, So we talk about your individual matchups. Another really interesting matchup was in the team fights where you guys had an incredible team, uh, especially with yourself alongside Bailey Murphy, who could be the hottest fighter in America right now, right? He's been on a tear. And so you two teaming up for team fights was really special. Uh, great fight against Great Britain with the mighty Elijah Evero, where top, uh, Team USA was able to come out victorious. Uh, but then what surprised some people was the Italians. The Italians came through and... Uh, had a difficult win. So let's start with the good side. Take us through that team fight with Great Britain. What did it take to beat them and Elijah? Okay. With GB, uh, we are we were thinking who fights with who, you know? And I say uh, to my coach, okay, here we have to think first. Who fights with who? So they're talking and they told me, you fight Elijah. And I say, okay, Elijah now is the best fighter in the world. Everyone knows that. He's the first one. Everyone knows that. And of course, I feel nervous because, you know, it's, it's like if one guy from Guatemala competes with you, you know, feel like that. So I, I say, okay, I, I fight with him. So the first fight was close, but Troy Beans beat the other guy, I think by three, four points, something like that. Bailey destroyed the other man, like seven, 10 points. He was fighting really good. So when I go inside, I was winning by eight, 10 points, something like that. So I go inside normal, you know? So I start to fight with Elijah. I know he's really good with hands. He's really good fighter. But for me, I train a lot for this. I, I don't care who is fighting with me. Just I think about the victory, you know? Mm-hmm. I, I was fighting with him. After two minutes, we finished the fight. We finished the fight. Close. He, he was winning the fight, but the team lost, you know? Mm-hmm. So after that, I was thinking that we, we will win this competition in team fights. Right. But you know, there are many, many good fighters. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did, I don't know, we did uh, a really, a little bit bad, the, we, we are confusing, you know, with the team, because first, go inside Troy Beans, I think he, he lost by one point, something like that, mm-hmm. Bailey, go inside, but you know, it's difficult to fight there, so the referees was to the other side, to the Italian people, so when I go inside, we are losing by eight points or something like that. So I was trying to beat the other guy, the other guy, but by many points. 
but you know that it's like 10, eight points is something really difficult. And the other guy was is really good fighter too. Ricardo Albanese, you know him? Yeah, he's really good fighter. So I got just a four points uh, into the fight, and we lose by four points in the last one. So I was like, mm, I want to win this, you know. Right. So, but this one learned to us that we have to work more, you know. Mm-hmm. We have to work more. Next uh, competition, I mean, world championship, we are going with all the stronger fighters. So we'll be a little bit different. Absolutely. And thank you for going through that. You know, sometimes it's it's hard for athletes to talk about the highs and the lows of competition when maybe things don't go your way. But one thing that I was really impressed by was the strategy against Great Britain, uh, because, you know, a, a lot of people in podcasts like this and everything else have talked about, well, we want to see Bailey and Elijah, Bailey and Elijah. They fought in the finals of the Waco World Championships. They fought at Irish Open back in 2020, right? Um, but to have you fight that anchor against Elijah um, with Bailey and Troy helping you guys get a lead, I thought that was great because what allowed you guys to get that win was your leg. Your leg stayed up for most of that fight against Elijah and prevented Elijah from being able to score the eight or ten points, however many he would have needed to pull off that comeback, right? Um, and then against Italy, I think that that's a testament to how much talent there is in the world, Right. Because we have Vasca and because we have so many great competitors, it's easy for sport karate fans to forget how much talent there is across the world in sport karate. Um, and Italy showed that. They fought a great fight and they were able to get to get the win, right? Uh, so now I want to move on from there. I mentioned Nasca and you fight on both, right? With Top 10 USA, you fight Nasca all the time. You fight Waco all the time. Um, take us through some of the differences in the rules and uh, which rules do you like more? Do you feel more comfortable with Waco rules or the NASA rules? Oh, it's, I don't know how to answer that. But I like NASCAR because my kicks, I, I kick mm-hmm. a lot, you know? <laughs> so my kick is two points. It's just one round. So it's more mm-hmm. easy. In Waco, it's just one point and it's two rounds. But I don't know, sometimes I like more Nazca, sometimes I like more Waco, because Nazca, the area is more, you know, it's not too big. So Mm -hmm. sometimes it's difficult to fight like this. In Waco is more big, but something that I don't like in Waco is the body jump. Mm -hmm. I don't like this. I don't like, you know, because all the time the referees give points, all the time. Maybe they, they don't they don't do body job and they keep, you know? So for this, I choose Nazca. I like more Nazca. Mm-hmm. And I think Nazca have a more, I don't know, a stronger fighters. Mm-hmm. I think in Waco is like just one point, 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 or one kick or something like that. But in Nazca mm-hmm. is more- Physically stronger fighters. Like, you know, yeah, it's a stronger fight. So for that, I think I like more Nazca. And Waco. Waco is really good. Uh, it's really good, but I like more Nazca. I think more Nazca. Mm-hmm. And that makes sense, right? I probably could have predicted that with you because you do like that kick, especially that side kick to the body. You would prefer that to be two points. And then I think there's a lot of fighters yes. that aren't a big fan of, of that front hand to the body. Uh, but one thing that I, that I thought was impressive was a lot of the American fighters that tend to fight more NASCAR tournaments were using that backhand to the body and scoring with it, right? So it's like, if it's in the rules, use it. I thought Bailey made that adjust well. I saw Bailey go for that back fist to the body a lot. Yeah. He scored with it, and it works because he's got really good reach, right? Um, so, yeah, I find that interesting. So for you, growing up in Guatemala, right, obviously there's no NASCAR. There is some Waco stuff that happens in Guatemala. Guatemala has a Waco team, right? So how did you find NASCAR? What got you competing on NASCAR? How are you going to say to compete in NASCAR? Yes. You mean that? Okay. Because um, here in Guatemala, are good level, yes. But you know, my dad was thinking and he said, I need more for you. 
because me, I don't want you stay just winning in Guatemala, winning in Mexico, in, you know, Colombia, Chile. I want you in all of competition of all world. And me, I say, I want, you listen to me? I lost you for a second. It blows up some, but go ahead. So okay. I heard uh, you wanted more competition outside of uh, Latino America, right? Okay, yeah. Okay, so I was thinking with my dad and said, yes, perfect. I have to go to the United States. Me, I have passport from USA. So for that, it's more easy for us with my brother to travel to the United States or to Europe, something like that. So... My dad say, you have to go. Okay, so I go to the United States for the first time. I was fighting with the uniform of my dad, you know, a Stars team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's my team from Guatemala. Yeah, okay. So after that, I go inside to Team Velocity. I go inside to Team Velocity. And I was there like five, six months. And after that, Jared Laker, we were talking about Waco USA. Uh, because I have passed from USA. So after this, uh, he told me, I, I'm not anymore in top team velocity. And he told me, you want to stay in top team USA? I said, yes, for sure. You know, it's a dream for me. So I go inside to top team USA, to Waco USA. So for this, I go more to NASCAR. So I start to to NASCAR. I start to win. So my dad see that. So he was, I will support you. You have to go. The, the other one after that, Jared, for Jared, I started to go to Europe because he told me, I want you come to Europe, one competition. He said, yes, perfect. I go for my second time to Europe and I win my my categories. So I start to go more, more. So for that, I going, I am going to be the best fighter in the world. I have to fight in both, you know, because if I fight just in Nazca, when I go to Waco, it's difficult, right. you know? If I go just Waco, it's difficult to fight just Nazca. Mm -hmm. so, so for that, I'm going Nazca, Waco, Nazca, Waco. A lot of conditions, you know? So for that, I go inside to Nazca and Waco because I want more. I'm a person that I like to win one category, but I don't stay just there. I want more, 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 more. So for that, I start to, to fight more, <laughs> yes. And that's the mentality of a champion. And we've seen several fighters who at one point or for a long time, in the case of one of them, has been the world's best fighter. They often compete on both Nazca and Waco to prove they are the world's best, right? We saw that with Elijah winning the Irish Open open weight and winning the U.S. Open open weight, right? Before Elijah, Zolt Marotti did it, yes. joining Dean Paul Mitchell and coming over to the States to win NASCAR tournaments while winning uh, Waco titles with uh, Team Corrali out of Hungary. And then, of course, the one that everybody knows about, Raymond Daniels, right? Raymond Daniels winning more Irish Open titles than any in history, but also winning every single NASCAR tournament that there is to win, right? So I think you're absolutely right. Yes. To be the best in the world, you have to be successful on both. Um, now, I did want to talk about Top 10 Team USA because some of our viewers that are tuning in might be like, wait, he's from Guatemala. Why is he on Top 10 Team USA, right? Uh, but Top 10 Team USA, yeah. is, for those of you that don't know, for Black Belt Magazine viewers that are maybe new to the sport karate world, uh, Top 10 Team USA is a team that is sponsored by the Top 10 brand and the coaches and owners of the team are in the United States. Uh, it's led by Coach Jarrett Liker. And one thing that, among others, right, Becca Liker's involved in that, Bob Liker, Jarrett's dad, of course, right, that whole team does a great job. And one thing that I have a ton of respect for that team for is that you guys can do both. You have forms and weapons world champions, and you have fighting world champions. And me being a Paul Mitchell guy, that's what Paul Mitchell has always tried to be, right? In the beginning, we were just a fighting team, but over the course of 30 years, we became – trying to be the best in fighting and in forms of weapons. So Top 10 USA has done that successfully and been successful in both elements of the sport, which I have a ton of respect for. 
Uh, so just tell us a little bit more about being on that team. What do you think about the coaching? Maybe tell us about some of your teammates. Okay. Uh, what you say is right. Uh, I didn't see any team that have forms and fight uh, fighters really good at world championship, you know? So for me, I feel really, really happy to be there because everyone there is really good. Everyone treat me really good. Uh, people from forums, people from uh, fighters, always were really good friends. And I love when Bob Laker coached me. You know, me, when I, I start this um, Karari, all the time my dad was back to me, just my dad. And some people want to try, try to coach me and me, I don't feel confidence, you know, with them. Never in the life, just my dad, my dad and my brother. No more. When I go inside to Top Team Team USA, I don't know why Bob Baker, you know. So with him, I feel really, really good. Uh, I in this competition, I really miss him back to me because he all the time he's telling me what I do, and he's really smart. He 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 knows how I fight. He knows. He knows that. So he always try to, when, when I, I start to, to lose the fight, he always uh, told me, no, you have to stay calm. You have to, you have to win. Calm. You have to do this, this, the other one. I start to do, and I, I win the fight, you know? So I fight, like this, I, I, I fight like this for him too. So I feel really, really good with him. With Jared, Jared tried, tried me like, like a son, you know? Becca too. Uh, everyone there is is really good. Blake and Trent are my really good friends. Mason Bumba, Mason Stowell, Olivia, everyone. I feel really good with them. And I almost have three years mm. there in Top 10 Team That's USA. Awesome. And I feel really good. I don't have any mm. problem there. That's awesome. And we love to hear that. It's great when an athlete has great synergy with their team. Uh, and you gave a very good political answer trying to list every single one of your teammates. But I'm, I'm going to ask a fun question, all right? Who is your favorite teammate and why? And you can't pick your brother. Maybe they're the funniest. Maybe they make a great roommate. Who's your favorite teammate and why? But it can't be your brother. Oh, it's difficult because I don't want anyone to stay angry with me. Okay, always I choose my brother. But now you say, no, my brother. So... I don't know when I go Sorry. Right. Yeah, we lost you for a second there. So go ahead. You said, can't pick your brother, but go ahead. Yeah, okay. But the first person that was with me when I go inside to Top 10 Team USA, the first one was Mason Bumba. You know, I really love him because he always, when I go inside to Top 10 Team USA, I didn't speak anything English, anything. I didn't speak, how are you, you know? Because I never been in USA, so for for me it was hard. And Mason Bumba started to learn Spanish for me and for my brother. He started to talk in Spanish with me and my brother. So for me it was really good to see that because he started to accept me in the team, you know. And the first person that was there is him. So the other two guys is Trent and Blake, you know. But if you say teammate for fights, I think Blake. I will say Blake. Because wow. he, he, he be, first I tell you, he's for my age, you know? And always when I go inside to one fight or I fight or he fights, always he told he tell me something. He tell me, you are the best. No one is like you. You will win easy, always. 
And me, I say the same thing for him, always. And now in this world championship, I, I really feel that he support me a lot because when I was in my fights, he told me, no, you can do it. It doesn't matter who is there, you will win. In team fights, I don't know if you see the life, when I, I win, he always come to me and he tell me you are good, you are the best, no one is like you. When I go inside with Elijah, you know, fight with him is really difficult. So when I go inside, he told me, you will beat him. You will win this fight because you are the best. He, he say that for, uh, because I feel more good like this. So he say that and me, I was feeling really good because he told me that and he always tried to, to do that. So if you, if you say teammate, I, I will say Blake. I will say Blake. Like, what's cool about that is that that actually reminds me. So one thing that we do on, on Paul Mitchell, which is a tradition that I like a lot, is we often have some of the fighters be roommates with the forms and weapons competitors so that it's not like two separate teams that they like get yeah. together, right? Um, and I remember several times uh, I was roommates with Justin Ortiz, another all-time great lightweight fighter, right? Uh, and we would like leave sticky notes on the mirror in our hotel room, sending each other messages about like, you're the best, you're going to, you know, that type really? of thing. Uh, yeah, so it, it's cool to see that that kind of camaraderie uh, that you've got that with your teammates. Um, so now I want to talk a little bit more about Guatemala in particular, because it, it's kind of crazy that, you know, randomly Guatemala of all countries is this great place of sport karate talent, right? Both in forms and weapons. Guatemala has produced world champions in forms, weapons, and in fighting. Um, and that's just something that I feel like a lot of people wouldn't expect, right? Especially like sport karate is a very American sport, right? It, it, you know, NASCA grew and developed in North America and the United States is where a lot of the world champions come from. Obviously, point fighting is huge over in Hungary and kickboxing, of course. And we've got uh, you know, like Elijah in Great Britain now, world champion, right? So it is an international sport, uh, but it's interesting how Guatemala is, is the, seems to be like the primary Latin American country that has like risen up and become like, this is the hub of sport karate in this part of the world, right? Um, so for you, let's take it back even further. How did you get started in martial arts in Guatemala? How did, how did that happen? Was your dad a martial artist? How did it start? Okay. First, my dad, uh, he, he started when he has uh, 17 years, no, 10 years old, something like that. When he has 17 years old, he starts uh, to open one gym. So when I, I was young, I started when I have three years old. My dad told me, you have to train. He, he, he put me, I was crying all the time because my dad told me that when I go inside to, to this gym with my dad, Always I cry, always, because I, I didn't like karate, you know? So my dad told me, no, you have to continue, you have to continue. So I start with, for my dad, because my dad have a gym, he is my sensei, you know? So for him, I start, in the first years, I didn't like karate. When I have 12 years old, I will say, I don't want any more karate. 12 years old. I say, I say, I don't like anymore. But my dad said, no, you don't go out. You are my, <laughs> my son, you don't go out. So I was like, mm, I don't want that. And I continue for one person is my brother. My brother, he always, when he was young, he always win every, every category. He always beat everyone. And me, I see him all the time, uh, how he's doing all the time. So me, I think I say, I want the same. I want to be like him, you know? And for him, I'm here because he told me, no, you, you can do it. I know that now you are not winning, but maybe in years you can be different. Don't go out, train with me. He always told me that. So me, I say, okay, I will continue. And for him, I am here now because mm -hmm. he never, never tell me, no, you have to go out. No, no, he always support me. 
And me always, I say, I want to be like him, always. And awesome. like this is because I'm here for him. Yeah. That's awesome. That's a beautiful story, right? And that, that bond between brothers that come up in martial arts and compete uh, is so very special. I also realized in talking about Latin American martial arts, right? I, in sport karate, we have to mention Venezuela too. Like Guatemala's up there, but Venezuela's up there as well. They've got a ton of talent. Uh, yeah. Tony Homsani, Team Legend, has done a great job uh, out of Venezuela. Even Team Legend has some Guatemalan fighters like Coca, right? Anyway, uh, yeah. so we'll move on. <laughs> Um, so I want to talk about, you know, a lot of our audience uh, is in the United States, and so they know about how regional tournaments are here and kind of how tournaments are structured in the United States. Um, when I went to Guatemala, I competed in tournaments there while I was teaching seminars and things of that nature. Um, there's a lot of things that are different. I noticed that they get a lot of frick sponsorship, right? I remember, like, Gatorade sponsored the tournament that I was at. Uh, GNC, the nutrition store, had, like, banners and stuff like that. So it seemed like there was more corporate uh, participation, sponsorship uh, in these Guatemalan events. So from your perspective, growing up in that country and competing in those tournaments, uh, just tell us a little bit about the sport karate culture in Guatemala. What were the tournaments like? What are some of the big differences? Okay, uh, not when I was young, I remember that always in every competition here in Guatemala, always see GNC there, GNC and Gator. Always, always there. And because I think it's like this, you know, Colocho, Santiago, eh, the brother of Colocho, you know, Andres, uh, when they start to fight in every competition in NASCAR, I think, eh, no, it's, it's not NASCAR before, right? Before it's not Who? NASCAR. What's not in NASCAR? The in, in United States, before? Like 10 years ago? Oh, yeah. NASCAR's been around since the 70s, like late 70s. Oh, NASCAR's okay. been okay. long. Yeah, yeah. Okay. When, when they start to go there, I think uh, GNC see that. Uh, I think they sponsor them. All the they sponsor them now. So mm -hmm. for that, always they are in competitions. And Gatorade, because it's the first, uh, it's the number one. In the in the world, so I think for this, I don't know how uh, they go inside to these competitions because mm -hmm. in my competitions never never are Gatorade or GNC, our other sponsor uh, like Oreo, you know, Oreo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In my competition was Oreo uh, or something like this, you know. But it's really different competition here in Guatemala than the United States. Uh, because here in Guatemala, I think sometimes they support more here uh, than United States. United States is like, okay, it's one competition, okay, perfect, we go. But it's like AKA or US Open or America or them nationals, you know? So who knows which competitions? But in Guatemala, it's like every competition, everyone go there, always support them, you know? I don't know. I don't know why it's a little bit different than the United States, but it's something like good here in Guatemala. Now it's not like before, you know, now it's not like before these competitions in Guatemala start to go more down. I don't know why, because maybe everyone is starting to go out. Now everyone in Guatemala is starting to go to Europe, to the United States, other countries. So I think for this, but now in Guatemala, uh, are just, I think, three or four competitions good uh, from Andres Garcia, you know, uh, Salvador. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Gran Jaguar, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And of my dad. I think just these all, right. all of four competitions are good now. Uh, mm. it, it's, it's like this. Right. And so two things that I think are interesting. Number one, obviously there's less tournaments total in Guatemala than there are in the United States. And so it's a little bit easier for corporate sponsors to do all of them because there's less of them. Right. Uh, but then it also sounds like there's more unity. Right. Whereas in the United States, you have a bunch of different leagues and different promoters have different visions. Right. Um, and so 
you know, a corporate sponsor would more likely support one event than trying to do everybody, right? Um, so I think that's interesting, and that's something I talk about on the podcast all the time, is how important unity is, right? Between competitors, between promoters, between leads, whatever the case may be, ultimately if we work together, that's going to help make our sport bigger, faster, right? So I want to keep talking about Guatemala a little bit more because you brought home a gold medal for Guatemala, which was awesome. But then also Guatemala got a gold medal in the weapons category from uh, Arturo Armendariz, uh, who actually Arturo and his sister Amanda, this is a funny story. Back when I went and taught seminars in Guatemala, they were the first two students in Guatemala that I gave private lessons to. So I did private lessons with them and then to see Arturo going on and winning uh, the Waco World title is really special. Uh, I competed against him at the Irish Open a couple of years ago, and it was cool seeing how far he had come. Uh, so first thing is, did you get a chance to see that? Um, and then just talk about how special that is for the country of Guatemala to have uh, Waco World Champions in weapons and in fighting. Yes, I, I see him. I see uh, in Waco World Champions. I was watching uh, the forums because I like to watch the forums too like fighting I, I like to watch forms and i see and um, i think four of the referees give to him 10 you know yeah it's awesome I, yeah so i think he now he is the best in guatemala from forms i think that and mm -hmm. i see him and he always work a lot for this you know years ago he started to to go more to nazca and you know to compete more in Waco, like uh, Amanda, she's mm -hmm. really good too. But now I think just Arturo is in this sport, right? I think just right. him. Yeah. So I see him and I really see that he's really good. He's really good. And I think all Guatemala is proud of him because, you know, he's for Guatemala. Me, I compete from USA, but I'm from Guatemala too. So for me, it's really good to uh, just, I will say to him, congratulations for this uh, world championship. I know that him is really good. And I always say that he is the best now and before and all uh, the life that happened in this sport, him is the best forms. He have the best one. I think that. Yeah. So shout out to Arturo. Congratulations, getting some, uh, some high praise from Enrique here. Um, let's see. Oh, so now something else I want to talk about. We're talking about the people who are the best right now, right? Arturo and weapons out of Guatemala, yourself and fighting out of Guatemala. What about up and coming talent? Are there any, like, what is the talent like in Guatemala? Are there any like young kids coming up? You're like, they're going to be a really good fighter. They're going to be a really good forms competitor. Uh, maybe yes. some of your own students. Yeah. In forms, they are a little bit, uh, young, uh, really mm -hmm. good. Like, you know, now they are coming some seniors from girls from Guatemala that are good, are good now. Uh, some people, I don't know too much from forms because you know me, I am in, in fights, you know, <laughs> always, <laughs> always fighting, always. But in fighting, there are many fighters that are coming good. There are many fighters that are coming good. Uh, I think now Guatemala don't have seniors I have, they have just three or four seniors. Everyone is from 17, 16, 15, you know, 18, but they are good fighters that are coming. For example, Colocho, he have uh, like three students, really good. Mm -hmm. that are coming really good and are doing really good work in the United States and in Europe too. Uh, Andres too. Uh, some guys from there, from Salvador too, they have a little bit good fighters and i think now in guatemala they have to go more out to nazca waco so they can they can do something more you know they can be more great more good fighters because it's what all need for that i'm here now and winning this world championship because me i go always uh, coming to nazca waco so for me it was really good that and i start to win for that but here in Guatemala are many fighters really good coming, young, you know. We love to hear that. As, as sport karate fans, we love to hear there's more talent coming. You know what? Uh, 
you, know, you mentioned, yeah, go ahead. Uh, like two years ago, I was talking with my dad. And two years ago, we were thinking that anyone was coming from Jan, you know, fighting adults. We were thinking, no, anyone is coming. The Sporting Guatemala will finish, you know. But in this pandemic, you know, many, many fighters start to train more. And this year, when I see many fighters are, are really good. So yeah. we talk, yeah, we talk with my dad and say, no, they are coming good fighters. You know? Right. I think we've yeah, seen yeah. that across the world in the pandemic is that we've seen all these new faces as sport karate is coming back that are arriving to the to these leagues after the pandemic. So in a way, maybe it was a good reset for everybody, right? And you know, you mentioned the need and you know, you mentioned it for Guatemala, but I think this is across the board, the need to leave your home country and go compete elsewhere if you truly want to be a world champion, right? That's one of the big criticisms of a lot of American competitors is that they'll never leave the United States but then somehow be a world champion. It's like, that doesn't add up, right? Like, you need to go to Europe and beat the Europeans. You need to go to, you know, South America and win down there to truly be a world champion. So I 100% agree that uh, it's yeah. important to go outside of your home country and compete. That's why it's great that we have – Waco and uh, WKC, which is having their world championships right now, WKU and other leagues. It's great to have these true world championships so that you can try out different leagues and get to compete against other countries. So we're going to have some fun with the last couple of questions here. We talked about up-and-coming talent. I've got two questions. Who is your favorite fighter? And again, you can't say your brother. Who is your favorite <laughs> in the world right now? to watch, to fight against, who you think is the best, whatever. Your favorite fighter right now, and who's your favorite ever, all time? Right now? That he's fighting now? For, yeah, both. Oh. Fighting now, who's your favorite, and who's your favorite ever? Right now, Bailey Murphy. Mm -hmm. Right now. Why? Uh, because he surprised everyone. Mm -hmm. He's so fast. He 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 kicked too. He I don't know. He he surprised. You know every fight. But he is going going with hands, and after that he do uh, one spinning kick. You know they were like <laughs> how how you do that? You know. So I think now from now is Bailey Murphy, and I, I don't say just for fights, mm -hmm. because he's good person too. Me I me I just. I see how is him too, how is the fighter, not just fight. Because maybe you can see a good fighter, but if in the life is really bad, I don't like, you know. Right. So I think for, for me right now is Bailey Murphy. And forever, ever, I think everyone answered that. Raymond Daniels, you know, Raymond Daniels. When I was young, all the time I watched the fight from Raymond Daniels. Uh, I was watching like two times in, in there. I was there, sit down, see him. And everyone is really, I don't know, everyone started to scream and say, Raymond Daniels, you know. And he surprised everyone. And I, I see him one time in Acapulco, Mexico. And he was fighting really, I don't know, he was crazy. And for me, ever, ever is Raymond Daniels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I still watch the fight of him. Yeah. Uh, and I that, that's you too. Answer, especially with Bailey and Raymond, because I think that what, what's so fascinating about Bailey's rise is that, in my opinion, he's got the most highlight material that we've seen since Raymond, right? I'm not saying he's the best fighter since Raymond. There's been a lot of great fighters, right? That's a, that's a heavy debate. But as far as highlight real material, you don't know what's going to happen next. He could jump spin kick somebody in the head or he could just blitz and it'd be faster than everybody else. We haven't seen anybody like Ray except Bailey. And Bailey's the closest thing we've got, right? Again, not talking about all-time best fighters, not there yet. But the way he fights and the way he entertains is unique. Um, and so I can totally see why if Ray's your favorite of all time, 
Haley would be your favorite now because the way they entertain people is very similar, right? Yeah. Uh, so now let's focus on Enrique, right? Because you are one of the best lightweights in the world. You're in the top five on the Black Belt Magazine world rankings, and lightweight is stacked. Elijah, Bailey, yourself, the lightweight half of point fighting in the world is crazy right now. Yeah. So what's next for you? You just won a Rocco World Championship. What's your next goal? Okay, for me, now, before was Rocco World Championship, you know? Next, for me, is me, I want to be the best fighter in the world. Number one, unique, you know? I'm working for that. Second, uh, my next is Irish Open. My next is Irish Open. I want Irish Open, but open way. Mm -hmm. The open way. That is, that is the biggest title. And there's a baby in the background, it's okay. Yeah. That is the biggest title in all of point fighting, right? The Irish Open open way is the title to win. So, in your opinion, if you win the Irish Open open weight, would that make you the best fighter in the world? Or are you the type of person, and I feel like I know the answer to this, do you feel like you need to beat Bailey, beat Elijah head-to-head, -head, beat Avery Plowden, whoever it is, right? And what, what, what would it take for you to say, I feel like I'm the best in the world? I think if I win Irish Open, I don't say I'm the best fighter in the world. It's just one competition. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can win one and the other one you can lose. But for me, be the best fighter in the world is like, for example, Elijah. Elijah have three years that he don't lose anything. He was winning all competitions. For me, that is be the best fighter in the world. You know why? Because he won US Open too. Mm -hmm. And he beat there many good fighters that are the best fighter in the United States, you know? So for me, that is be the best fighter in the world. When like three or four years continuing without losing, for me that I will say me, I'm the best fighter in the world, you know? Of course, of course, I have to beat Elijah, Avery, Bailey, you know, because I fight with them. And there, them always are in my categories. You know, always I go to Grand Champion Lightweight, overall Grand Champion, always with Bailey, 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 or Laja, you know, or overall and overall is every, you know, open weight is there. So for me, that is be the best fighter in the world. And I won that. You just became one of my favorite fighters. I love that answer because Thank that's you. how I feel like it should be. Forms, weapons, fighting doesn't matter. To be the best in the world, you have to be dominant for an extended period of time. Not one tournament, not even one season. You need to repeat it over and over and over again to prove that you're that guy. So I love yes. that mentality, and that is the exact mentality that gives you a chance to do it. Um, so thank you for that answer. I love that, and you just you just gained it. I mean, I was a fan of yours already, but I'm more of a fan of yours now, right? Um, and then also, exciting announcement for everybody that's tuning in. Uh, the Jax Rudolph Podcast is back. We're going to be back weekly next week on the show. It's not going to be live. We'll do it pre-recorded uh, because he's from Great Britain. Elijah Everill is going to be on the show next week. So you got Waco World Champion Enrique Latona this week. Next week, you're getting another Waco World Champion, Elijah Everill. Uh, we're going to have a great time. And I'm going to keep trying to bring uh, some of the best sport karate athletes in the world as the guests on this podcast to tell the history of the sport, to get inside the mind of the athletes, understand how the sport functions now, and understand what we need to do to continue becoming a better sport for the future. So, Enrique, thank you so much for your time. This has been a great interview. I love your stories. I love the, the answers that you gave. Uh, do you have any final thoughts before we sign off here? Thank you very much. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, for me, it means a lot for you because me always, I say that you are really first great person and second informs really for me, you are the best and no one will be like you. It's like Raymond, you know, you are like him. You are, when I see your arm, it's like, I don't see, you know? 
So for me, it's really good that you asked me to do this. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity, and I hope uh, we have more, you know. Thank you very much, Enrique. Uh, that means a lot to me. And definitely, we will have you back on the show. You've been great. Um, and yeah, that's the other thing. By the way, when you guys are watching the podcast, talking to the audience here, if you've got a guest that you really enjoyed and you want to see them come back on the show, drop them in the comments. If there's a guest that we haven't had yet that you want to see on the show, drop them in the comments. If you've got any questions for Enrique, Drop those in the comments as well. Feel free to tag him. I'll be in the comment section as well, answering questions after we log off here. Uh, and thank you to everyone that's tuning in. If you enjoyed the show, make sure that you share it so that all of your friends see it. That's how we keep this podcast going. So hit that share button, hit that like button, drop those comments, and uh, make sure you head on over to Enrique's page. Give him a follow on Facebook, Instagram, all of his social media. Uh, I'm sure he'll post that down in the comments as well. Um, so without further ado, I'm Jackson Rudolph. That's Enrique. That that's Enrique Lutona. <laughs> this has been episode 81 of the Jackson Rudolph podcast, and I'll see you next time.